What a beautiful autumn day here in Florence, Italy, and it's time to talk about the five top transfers from the 2020 to the 2021 seasons, the five rider transfers that worked. And number one, you guessed it, Mark Cavendish. People had written off the British sprinter, the best sprinter of all time in the Tour de France, saying he was over and done with. Well, Mark Cavendish proved us all wrong. He'd bounced around in the last few years between Teams Dimension Data and Bahrain Victorious, and he convinced Patrick Lefebvre, who still believed in him, to give him a spot at the Wolfpack Team de Kuna Quick Step. Part of the agreement was that Cavendish brought in his own sponsors. Doing so proved a good bargain because Cavendish worked his way back up to the top. He won in the Tour of Turkey, but still not many of us believed in Mark Cavendish. Then, through a series of circumstances, he got a spot on the Tour de France team and went on to win four stage wins and took another green jersey to add to his Palmar's unbelievable Mark Cavendish also matched Eddie Merckx's record of 34 stage wins in the history of the Tour de France, making him one of the biggest successful transfers of the 2021 season. Look at this, right up here is Ponte Vecchio, the old bridge in Florence, and I'm gonna take you over that. We're gonna talk about the Australian Ben O'Connor, a successful transfer from Team NTT Dimension Data over to Team AG2R Citroën. AG2R gave him full faith, and we saw that in the Tour de France. He was one of my favorite riders to speak with every day at the Tour de France. Always so happy, always a pleasure to speak with Ben O'Connor. And in the Tour, he did all of Australia and Perth proud. AG2R put him on the path for the Tour de France, and we saw that already in Paris, Nice. He rode well there. Then at the Dauphiné, he rode well there as well, climbing up to fifth place on that plunge summit finish stage, the mega summit finish stage, and that set him up for an eighth overall. Look at this. All these jeweler shops are right here in Ponte Vecchio, a really beautiful spot here in Florence. So going into the tour, AG2R gave him full support and it paid off. At the end of the first week up in Tenya, he won a summit finish stage. Now that right there made the transfer successful for Ben O'Connor going over to AG2R. That also set him up for the final two weeks of the Tour de France, making a run at the podium of the Tour de France. AG2R supported him along the way. He didn't get on the podium, but he got fourth place overall. A massive achievement for the Australian and a massive transfer, successful transfer for AG2R. Look at this, the huge Palazzo Uffizi Art Museum. All the statues lined up there and down there. You got David as well, but I'm on the lookout for coffee. I'm gonna talk about another Australian. I'm going from Ben to Jack. Jack Haig. And Jack's another similar success story like Ben O'Connor. Jack Haig left Mitchelton Scott, and many people thought that was a weird move, leaving his home team, an Australian team, and going to Bahrain victorious. And in that same time, shortly after, team boss Rod Ellingworth left the team. McLaren pulled out its sponsorship. It looked pretty bad, but Jack Haig kept the faith, and he had a similar path to Ben O'Connor, going well in Paris-Nice, seventh overall, going well in the Criterium du Dauphiné, fifth overall, then the Tour de France. Well, the Tour de France was short-lived. Jack, after day two, had to quit the Tour because he crashed and broke his collarbone. It was over. But he lines back up at the Vuelta España, there to help Mikel Landa's teammate. That was the, the agreement, apparently. But 
Soon after the race starts, we find out Jack is the man for the overall. He rode steadily through the Spanish Grand Tour, a bunch of fourth and fifth places, fighting steadily for that final podium. And he made it a third place overall for the Australian and underlining what a great signing it was for Bahrain Victorious. And you can be sure, after years of Jack Haig riding a Mitchelton Scott in the shadow of the Yates twins, now you know he's gonna be the leader for Bahrain Victorious when they go into the 2022 Grand Tour season. Mm. Now let's get out of here so I can talk about the final two riders on my list of five. Now the fourth rider I have on my list is Canadian Mike Woods. He finally breaks out of the shell at EF Education and moves over to Israel Startup Nation. The Canadian co-owner Sylvan Adams signs up Michael Woods and has no regrets. Michael goes in right away on his second day of racing. Stage two of the Tour du Var wins a stage. It looks good for Mike Woods. He goes on to the Ardennes Classics, does a fifth and a fourth place overall, or a fourth and a fifth in the flesh and the age. Good results. Then the Tour of Romandia up at 2,000 meters, the big summit finish. Mike Wood claims victory with his hands in the air. A great victory for Mike Woods. Sylvan Adams gets on the phone to Michael Woods and says, Michael, I'm gonna need you to lead our Tour de France team because Chris Froome is not at his best. And so we're gonna need you to slot in the leadership role. So it's Michael Woods who's got the leadership position going into the biggest race of the year, the Tour de France. He didn't get off to a great start. He had a few crashes and that kind of held him back, but still he was attacking and attacking. Take for instance that stage to Le Grand Bernard where he's in the attack and he finishes third on the stage. Those stages were giving him enough points where he eventually had a day in the mountains jersey, that famous polka dot jersey. But Canadian Mike Woods always had the Olympics on his mind. And so he had to make a decision. He left the Tour de France a bit early so he could go over to Tokyo and be ready for the Olympics. In that road race that was eventually won by Richard Carapaz, Michael Woods finishes fifth. A great result and a great strong season. His first season at Israel Startup Nation and for sure the team was happy with that, especially with Chris Froome not going at his best this 2021 year. And a great transfer, Mike Woods over at Israel Startup Nation. You didn't think I was gonna show you a construction site for this last one, did you? No, no, right over here is Santa Croce. It's this big famous church where inside Michelangelo is buried. Now let's keep on the theme of Australians for Richie Port. Richie Port moved back to Team Ineos Grenadiers after spending two seasons in Trek Sigafredo. And his last one was a good one because he finished third on the podium at the Tour de France. Ineos is bringing the 36 year old Tasmanian over to do what he does best. Not to lead the GC team and Grand Tours, but to go for those week long stage races. And it worked out quite well because in Catalonia, he finishes second overall to teammate Adam Yates. In the Tour Romandie, second to another teammate, Garrett Thomas. Look at that, amazing, huh? Richie then gets his turn at the Criterium du Dauphiné. On the stage de La Plan, just 24 hours before the race finishes, he finishes second behind Marc Proudhon. He defends the leader's jersey that he took on that stage. The next day, wins the race overall in that yellow jersey. A successful move for Richie and a successful transfer for Ineos Grenadiers.